We're back here live at Dell World 2012. Full day coverage, we're going to the back end of the day here. I'm John Furrier of SiliconANGLE. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and we're here with Suresh Vaswani, who's the president of Dell Services. Dell has been undergoing a major transformation, as we've been reporting on and talking about uh, all day. Services is a huge part of that transformation. Suresh, welcome to The Cube. Thank you. So, as I say, services is a, is, a, is a big piece. It's the, John always calls it the tip of the spear uh, from you know, consulting all the way down to, to technology services. So, um, a lot of people don't think of Dell as a services company. You, know, you think of Dell as a product company, but um, I think half of your employees are, are services, and uh, you run that organization. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Dell services, accounts for virtually half the manpower of uh, Dell. So there's a lot of services in Dell. Uh, if you look at the scale of our business today, it is eight billion plus in terms of size. So it's a fairly substantial business. And uh, five, six years ago, most of Dell services was support and deployment. And support and deployment is still a very large part of our services because that grows with the, with the technology business growing. And we innovate further to, you know, to make sure that we uh, give higher end services to customers as they buy our technology. But leaving aside the support and deployment services, a large part of our business is uh, uh, what we call as non-tied services, or not necessarily tied to all the infrastructure. So we do applications in BPO, and we do it well. We are fairly strong in uh, four sectors, particularly healthcare, we stand out. We do a lot of interesting solutions for the BFSI segment. Uh, we uh, work in the retail and manufacturing sector and we've done some real serious innovation in terms of application implementation for our customers. So that's one, one part. Uh, we have a very strong security services business. Uh, it, is, uh, it is rated as uh, in the uppermost quadrant of uh, Gartner's magic quadrants, which means it's very, very innovative and really world class. And, uh, and we manage as many as uh, 32 billion security events every day. So that's the, uh, that's the, that's the sort of uh, thing that we do. And, uh, and it is really a world class security business. It's currently focused on North America and we will expand that business across the world. Then we've got another very interesting business, the infrastructure and cloud consulting business. So this is all about integrating our uh, uh, integrating, consulting, integrating, and managing IT infrastructure technology for customers. We, uh, we integrate all of Dell's technology, we integrate next generation technology around infrastructure, and make it work with what the customer has today, right? And basically give the best experience to the customers in that sphere. So if you really look at Dell services, we, we're fairly uh, broad, fairly complete. Uh, we do a lot of services business, which is we go and compete with the service providers in the world and we acquire a lot of customers that way. And we also work very, very closely with Dell in terms of augmenting and actually put stitching together all of Dell's technology. You've got Dell uh, end user computing solutions, you've got Dell enterprise solutions, the server storage network and converge infrastructure, and you've got software products now. It's services that really sort of puts it all together as an IT solution for the customer. Sir, Suresh, we have a services angle uh, site called servicesangle.com, siliconangle.com is our main, main uh, media site. Um, so we've been tracking services now for about a year and a half, mainly because one, no one really is writing anything about it. It's kind of, it's kind of a boring but profitable sector, but it is going under massive transformation. We've seen the client server wave uh, and back in the day, drive a lot of that older methodologies and implementations, you know, Oracle rollouts, SAP rollouts. Now with cloud and converged infrastructure and this modern infrastructure, big data being a big driver, uh, new, uh, new server architectures, new storage, are causing customers to really, really re-architect their IT environments. So I'd like to ask you, what are the big, what's the biggest transformation that you've seen in the services industry services being you know, professional services around IT over the past five years. What, what's the big change? Is it project cycles? Is it customer orientation? 
Is it everyone's tired of outsourcing? Is it time to value, all of the above? What is the biggest transformation that you've seen? You know, I, or disruption? So the way I look at it is, uh, and I was in a very interesting CIO session, and in a way that's what Dell is also driving. There's a big change taking place in the services industry. Uh, in the past it was all about, okay, I've got this huge IT infrastructure, I've got thousands of applications, right? It costs so much, let me, uh, let us figure out how to manage this for less. So that led to the formation of the IT outsourcing industry, the global delivery models and so on and so forth, but fundamentally nothing changed. What you were doing, you continue to do at a lower cost, and that was good, right? But really nothing was changing uh, sort of dramatically. Now, now we're at an inflection point. We are at an inflection point all across. We are at an economic inflection point, we are at a technology inflection point, and we are at a business inflection point, and if businesses just live in the past, it's not going to be very good. And that's where, uh, that's, that is where the services industry also is uh, leading into. The distinct shift that's happening is not only about managing the past and managing the past for less and all of that, it's about how do you transition the customers to their future. There's a lot of active dialogues that are taking place. The business is putting a lot of pressure on IT. <laughs> how do I reach more customers at a lesser cost? Maybe social media is the answer. How do I predict economic downturns or product downturns, right? So you need all the data insights on data analytics and all of that. So they come back to the IT folks and say, help us do that, because it's the business imperative. And in a way, Dell has also been communicating a lot of that. All The entire Dell event is all about the five forces. And IT has been starved. I mean, IT has been, for the decade, prior to a few years ago, do more con constricting, yes. cutting people, outsourcing, so there's not, it's like a skeleton crew. It's not much, <laughs> so now I have to, now, now grow. <laughs> Got to hire people. Um, you know, no, more than hiring people. Do more. <laughs> I get more functionality, new servers, new software. Who do they call? I mean, it's like a different phone call. Do I call Cap Gemini? No, they're managing the help desk. I mean, I'm mean, a random example, but this is what I'm trying to look for and, and get the get the extract the signal here because the services is hard to say. I mean, right now you're saying I agree with everything you're saying, but what is the new way? What does the modern services architecture look like? Um, so you said, who do they call? I think they should call Dell. <laughs> and the reason why, there's a reason why I yeah. say it. The reason why I say they should call Dell is because we don't have too much of baggage, we don't have too much of legacy, period. We've built the entire Dell, I mean, if you hear the communication, is all about taking the customers towards open architecture, yeah. taking the customers towards future, and our service business is completely aligned to that. How do I take my customers to the future? How do I enable customers to use future technology, right? At the same time, respecting the past, so one is not denigrating the past. Then you must have a strategy of how to go from past to the future, which is why we bought a few application modernization companies, right? And all that we do in application modernization is if customers are not shifting fast enough from legacy systems or mainframe systems, to new age systems, the only reason they're not doing that is because they don't have a viable application migration strategy. And that's what, what we've invested in, in terms of building application modernization capability, which gives the confidence to the customer that, look, I can move from here to here. And once you're there, you innovate. You apply all the five forces, make it work. So for in the business. old days, Dell was called in to do support and maintenance and all that stuff. Now you have a broader set of things. Yes. So you now can still be the multi-vendor, but also you got a lot more tools in your bag, so to speak. Got a what, yeah. what are the big things that you have in your in your tool tool chest that really are driving the services business? Is it the server growth? Is it the software? Uh, is it just the unique insight into customer experiences? What would you say to that? I mean, how would you, you describe know, that? We, we have, Dell has several businesses. Each one of them is aligned, right? And moving in the direction of making Dell and IT solutions provider, keeping the future in mind, right? So if you really look at Dell today, we've got Dell end user computing. There's a lot happening there. Yeah. We've got Dell, uh, 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 we've got Dell enterprise solutions. A lot the happening The security is huge. 
you've got uh, you've got uh, software and security and that's fairly large and then you've got the services services piece and all of them are really aligned right towards making sure that we deliver to the future promise of the customer so i think that's what dell has uh, dell has uh, going for us and we are really looking at the future really looking at the forces that are driving change does dell have just one services group or does Marius Haas of his own ver version. Dell has one services group. So you help Marius's group out. I help Marius's group out. I innovate around services that I can provide around Marius's technology, and I do that for for the rest of Dell. In addition to that, I have a services business which is not necessarily tied to the technology, right? It's so we have the best of both worlds. So you have a holistic view of, of the, the company, which Dell, many services, and the which many services companies don't have, which. I mean, if you're a standalone services company, you're, you're caught in your own, own services business. Here we are a services business that has hooks onto all the technology and all the forces that are driving change. So I think we have that extra edge. So Sam Palmasano, famous you know, CEO, former CEO of IBM, obviously knows something about services. He made the statement uh, at one point that if, 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 if you're in the biz, IT business, any business, you will at some point get commoditized. And he made this statement even including services. So, first of all, do you buy that? Second of all, you're seeing Amazon move into the business, the cloud business, and taking a different approach. They've even said at the, you know, their recent reInvent conference, we're not going to try to mimic the way that enterprise, enterprises have done IT. We're going we're to try to change that. So, What's your thought on that Sam Palmasano premise? How does a company like Dell respond to that? And what are you thinking, what are you, what's your thinking on Amazon charging into that business? See, at the end of the day, speaking about uh, uh, the club and uh, you know, the comment on Amazon, I think our, our strategy is much more oriented towards managing private clouds for customers on their premise or on our premise, uh, much more making sure that we innovate with all the technology that we have and make the cloud work for the customer in a secure, uh, give secure way, a very flexible way, and give that ruggedness that uh, that the business user needs, right, uh, uh, in terms of leveraging the cloud, right. So you need a rugged sort of overall system that is secure, that is tight, that does not fail, et cetera, et cetera. So we do believe that a private cloud is a key issue in so far as customers is concerned. At the same time, you need to leverage for some applications the public cloud. So our philosophy is Dell will be the best private cloud services provider in the world. Dell will have its public cloud. Dell will also interoperate with multiple public clouds to give the customer a, you know, a truly good solid hybrid hybrid uh, solution. So that's what our philosophy is on cloud. And then of course, Dell has a lot of technology that also feeds into many other public service providers. So that's that's what our view is on the cloud. Suresh, so, so um, by the way, we like that idea of the private cloud. I mean, it's the fabric inside the, the yes. company. Um, so you got the converged infrastructure, you got virtualization. I mean, it's the, it's the old wine in a new bottle, as the expression goes. You know, you, infrastructure, applications, and middleware. <laughs> so today, converged infrastructure, virtualization, software, and now applications. So Michael talks about this, you guys talk about workloads. It's all about the applications. Now, with bring your own device to work, you have a consumer experience, and which is applications, app stores, and in-house apps, I've got to dial into the land. It's a nightmare for security, so that's a security issue. So the question I have for you is, um, relative to applications, what are you guys looking at from the DevOps side, for example? How do you talk to developers inside the companies? Now, IT has to start developing mobile apps. They have to develop uh, frameworks. So talk about the developer market that you're playing in with the customers. What, what do they like? What Can you share with the folks your experience of what the customer's developer market is. <coughs> Do they have developers? Are they in-house developing? Are they pushing development to the outside? Is it in-house DevOps? What's, what are you seeing There's for the trend? There's a mix of all, all of that you've said. Uh, a lot of the large customers have a lot of development capability on their own. So they tend to sort of outsource what is routine and uh, look at their in-house development teams for more innovative work. So a lot of customers actually outsource all of development. Uh, in so far as uh, Dell is concerned, I'll talk about Dell developers. 
what is changing there? There's a lot of change happening there as it relates to mobility, right? Yeah. So the world is moving to mobility, so all our developers now are getting tuned to deliver applications or to transform applications to work on the mobile, right? So in a way, the development community also is getting aligned to the five forces and the uh, sort of change those five forces are driving. It also impacts what they do. So it's, it's, it's a whole new paradigm. Developing an application for legacy systems versus for mobile environments is completely a, a two different... Uh, and are you guys providing those tools? Oh yes, we provide those tools, we provide the training, we help them transition, they need good design skills, uh, they need good customer experience skills, and a lot of that is changing. Okay, great. Suresh, sure, we're getting the break here, so we have to uh, kind of transition to our next guest. Uh, okay. We're going all day long here at Dell World 2012 in Austin, Texas. This is siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv, the Cube, our flagship program throughout the events. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Okay, thank you.